So welcome back to another video. And then in this video today, we're going to learn about how I made a D-Latch using only NPN transistors. And I, I'm gonna say this again, I know, but there's not really a good video on how to make a data latch using the least possible amount of transistors. There is one on there. I think it's, um, I forgot the channel name, but I'll show it right here. And it makes a data latch using transistors, but it uses like 30 of them. This would be as efficient as possible for my digital clock that I wanna make using only bare minimum of electronics. So um, let's get right into it and I'll show you how it works. Okay guys, so this is my data latch using these transistors that we have right here, um, using TTL Logic. And there's not really a good video out there on how to make your own data latch with just pure transistors. Most of them show you how to make it using logical gates, but I want to know the bare minimum of how to use it with just transistors and resistors and then buttons. So. This is it, this is schematic right here. I just drew it up. So we have the clock signal and then the data signal. Both that's um, connected to five volts. We have these two 20 um, kilo ohm resistors right here that limit the current by a lot. These both feed into this first AND gate right here. And then the data latch feeds into this NOT gate, which then goes into the second AND gate right here. And this is the clock signal right here. So let's explain how the um, this part works first and then we'll go back to that. So this is the SR latch right here and it's made conventionally using two NOR gates, but if you use transistors, you can get away with using um, just two of them. So we have the set and reset pins on these sides. So one of them is gonna turn the, the output on and the other one's gonna turn the output off and then this one's the negative output. So if the output's on on this side, this one's gonna be off and vice versa. So that's how this basic works. And unlike most circuits, this one requires um, a ground connection for it to work and not a power connection to the transistor for it to work, which is actually very beneficial because it saves us on a few other transistors. So yeah, we have the set and reset. So. If the data latch is on, we're going to turn this NOT gate off. So this is on, this AND gate's not gonna work. And this AND gate's half complete. So if this data latch is on, and this clock is on, this AND gate's um, on, and then we're going to um, turn the output on. But if the data is off and the clock is on, then this, um, this AND gate's gonna activate because we have a NOT gate right here, and it's gonna turn the output off. So that's how it works. And then one other benefit of this is that the clock signal has to be rising from low to high for it to work. If the data's on, or if the clock's on, then the data turns on, it won't, it won't latch. So it's just gonna blink real fast and then it's gonna turn off. So that helps us um, synchronizing the data and only putting the data that we want in there. So this is the circuit right here. So this is, well, let me see, this is the clock pin, and this is the data pin right here. So if we flip the data pin on, nothing happens. Flip the clock pin on, nothing happens. But if we flip them on at the same time, the light turns on and it latches to the thing. So it almost memorized that we put a one into this um, register. So if we put the clock signal on and this one's off, it goes back to zero because that's what we want to save into it. But let's, if we turn the clock signal on first, then the data, it doesn't latch. The clock signal must go from low to high while the data is on for it to latch. Which is really cool about this because if we send da like data to it while the clock signal is high or off, it's not going to corrupt the system because it won't latch to it. And to reset it, we just click the clock signal. So this is gonna help a lot with my circuitry I saw. Um, if you saw the, the video of me building a clock using that software, I'm trying to replicate this using transistors and normal logic in real life. 
So I already made the adder and this is the register right now. Or yeah, this will soon be the register right now. This is only a one bit register of what I need. And then for anybody who actually cares, um, this was the first data latch that I made and it is way, way, way more complicated. So I was thinking this using making normal logic gates with transistors and a normal one, if you want to send an output signal of high would require um, three transistors to the end gate. And then it would require four transistors for this SR latch. So we can convert this high signal to a ground signal. But I mean, I realized that was not really the most efficient way to make this. So I redesigned it, but this one still did work. Um, and it made sense to me when I made it. So that's why I made it. And then I tweaked the design. That's why this says 1.0 right here. And then if we flip this around, we see the 2.0 right here. And all of this is made using um, NPN 3904 transistors and only two types of resistors, which is 220 kilo ohms and then uh, 47 kilo ohms. So that is the end of this episode right here. Um, I'm going to show the adder in the next episode, which is just a, it's just multiple half adders together since I only had to add one number since it's only a clock. Um, I'll show that in the next one. And then I'll also solder on six of these registers and then hook up the adder to the register so we can make this full circuit and I can get a, a little second counter for this clock to work. Um, as always, if you have any suggestions on what you want me to teach next on what you want me to build next please let me know in the comments and if you like electronics learning about them and want to just support and help my college career and fund my college life please subscribe thank you